We're here at the National Firearms Museum at NRA headquarters. Jim Sapika is here with the Curator's Corner. And Jim, if you can't see us, it's because we're talking about disguised firearms That's today. Right. So That's you've right. got some wonderful items here and, and each one a, a treasure on its own. Tell us, sir, what you have for us this week. Disguised firearms are, uh, uh, in general, firearms that aren't obviously a gun when you first look at them. And we have a couple great examples of that. And one that's not so much a, a disguised firearm, but it's kind of weird and kind of fun. So we'll look at all of those. But one of the better known uh, types of uh, disguised firearms are cane guns. And Remington introduced these. Um, and uh, it looks like a, just looks like a gentleman's cane. Uh, fine looking cane. Very, very uh, common in the, the mid 1800s uh, when these were introduced. But uh, uh, the barrel would unscrew to load and it is a, uh, the, the, the walking stick itself is a, uh, a barrel. Uh, and uh, you simply load there. They made these in both, uh, I believe, percussion and cartridge uh, flavors. And it was lo loaded that way. It's a simple walking stick when you carry it. And then to fire it, you'd uh, simply pull the handle back, exposing the mechanism there. And there is a button oh. on the bottom ah. of the cane that you would press to actually fire it. So uh, uh, for all the world, you're just out for a stroll, but it is a, uh, uh, a concealed uh, concealed firearm. That is truly a concealed firearm. It is. It is. Very, and, well concealed. Uh, very well and concealed. Very well concealed. And a good-looking walking stick, Yes, too. it is. And they were, they were very, very, uh, very popular in the era. They were uh, successful for Remington. Uh, they made quite a few of them. It's nice to have one in, in this type of condition. The, the sheath here of the barrel, the, the sheathing material, is very fragile gutta percha, an early form of plastic. So uh, it's nice to have one that is, yes. is this intact. They made one that's even scarcer. Uh, they made a number of different types. But this is the duck's head cane. They made a dog one too, but this is the, uh, the same concept. It's the uh, uh, duck's head uh, uh, cane gun. And uh, this is just a lovely specimen. Beautiful. You see the, uh, the duck's head there. And again, a very, very sound, very intact uh, gutta percha shaft on it. But a, a neat, neat uh, a, a cane gun. Now, the question, now a question for you. This has a tip at the bottom. Yeah, see, it would be a good idea to take that out before you shot. No, I was going to say, some I imagine that one, too. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, if you're walking yeah. along, Jim, and you're yeah, yeah, step putting yeah. in the dirt, and you get some dirt in there, you need to go fired. You can that, get yourself on a whirl. That is a so, problem, exactly. Yeah. Just like it is today, that's why you don't rest your right. gun muzzle down on yeah. the ground it's when just, you're uh, out shooting. That's beautiful there. It's a lovely, lovely king gun. This one is a little more unusual, and there are a number of these out there. Uh, this is a, a knife pistol. It looks for all the world like a regular... A uh, gentleman's folding uh, folding knife, and it does in fact have the uh, the blade in it. But what else it's got going for it is it has a little barrel there and a trigger on the back to fire it. And you find a number of these knife guns out there. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful with them. There are restrictions on modern guns that are uh, disguised as as things other than guns. So there are restrictions on them in today's a law, but back in the uh, uh, mid to late 1800s, these were very popular and uh, just seemed like a good idea. You need a corkscrew, you probably need a, a barrel on your uh, on your folding knife too. So it gives, gives a whole new concept to the Swiss Army there knife. There you and go. The, that's the right. That's applications right. It truly really does. Truly really does. But a very neat little specimen. Wow. This next now, one. What? What? Do you have any idea what the caliber is on that thing? It's something. It's about yay big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to use these technical terms. I know, yeah, that's, that's what I was Now, speaking yeah. of yay big, yeah, uh, yeah, this, yeah, is, this yeah, is really yeah. neat. This is a little concealed, concealable handgun. It's really a pretty nifty design. Uh, there is something similar introduced uh, recently, but let's talk about this one. This is called the Novo, Lenovo. And it is a little tiny, uh, uh, about 22 caliber revolver, uh, multiple shot, six shot revolver with a folding trigger. It was very, uh, very common on a number of little European pistols. But the thing that's unique about this one is the folding grip. So you unfold the grip, the, uh, the trigger pops down, and it's just a little double action revolver. Wow. Just like that. And uh, uh, just very neat, uh, very nifty. 
uh, very concealable. You know, North American Arms made that little uh, single action revolver, still do, I believe. And uh, at one point they had a folding grip for, th for that. But uh, this one, actually, the entire grip frame folds up. So it's, uh, it's very nifty, very, very tiny, uh, uh, very interesting. This one is serial number one of this uh, particular model. But, uh, That's a beautiful very, work very on that folding grip on Isn't there. that lovely? Yeah. 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 Lenovo. Pretty neat. And it once again shows, Jim, just, you know, the gentleman who, who designed and put these together, the, the thought and the craftsmanship and the work, and just the ingenuity to figure, okay, there's four different or three different kinds of designs, completely different, but completely all just very practical. If you want something that's concealable and in disguise, I guess you'd say even better, there's some great concepts for you right there. They really are. They now, really are. Now, these are on open display, not in disguise yes, here. Yes, yes. And how yeah. would you come and see the some firearms like this here at the National Just Fire come Museum. On, come on to the museum here. It's right at NRA headquarters in uh, Fairfax, Virginia. And we're open every day of the week, uh, 9.30 to 5 most days. We stay open late till 7 on Saturdays. If you can't make it by the museum, come by our, our website, nationalfirearmsmuseum.org. It is going through some exciting updates. We're in the process of doing a major rebuild of the uh, website uh, to where uh, uh, we hope by early 2010 every firearm in the museum will be viewable on the website along with a wealth of information on, on firearms, firearms histories for collectors and students and people who just have an interest. Some great little video clips, a lot of the co collector corner. Uh, uh, curators corners. Yeah, right? yeah curators there. corners. Yeah. They're going to be archived there to where uh, browse them and watch them at your leisure. Yeah, this has been a huge labor for you guys putting time in it. And, and now uh, there's there's video tours up there now, virtual tours of the museum. So it really is, you can't get here to Fairfax and you should when you're in the DC area, get here to the NRA headquarters, check out the website as well. And the web address is? Nationalfiremsmuseum.org. Check it out now and then come back and watch us grow. Very good, Jim Speaker, director here at the National Firearms Museum. Thank you for these wonderful disguised firearms here on the Curator's Corner. Thanks, John. It's always fun.